Knuckleheads, this is our David Avenesian versus Josh Kelly post-fight reaction results. We still got to get back to the Bear Chelt versus Valdez fight. That card is going on now, but I just needed to comment on this absolutely fantastic card put together by Matchroom Boxing. I mean, almost all of the fights, especially towards the end, were very, very entertaining. Of course, if you didn't watch it, Josh Kelly gets stopped in the sixth round. Look, this was a very exciting fight while it lasted. Kelly looked the much more athletic, the much cleaner boxer in the beginning. Definitely won the first two rounds and even stung Avanesian. I believe it was in the second round. Looked like he had the power to hurt him and get him out of there, but Avanesian just walked him down with the guard up. It was very, very similar to the way if you guys remember, Floyd Mayweather dealt with Conor McGregor. Just kept his hands up and walked him down. When he got inside, just banged on him. And Avanesian just kept doing that, doing that, doing that. And Kelly just didn't seem to have an answer for it. I mean, he wanted to continue to box at a distance. Uh, he kept, you know, trying to jump back, make some space and box at a distance. He didn't really have an answer for Avanesian on the inside. You know, it makes me kind of wonder what Kelly's strategy was going into this fight because let's face it you know if you know Avanesian you know that's his style and you know you should be prepared either to be able to move and box without issue for 12 rounds or you should be able to move and box and when the guy comes in hold him hold him um that's not what Kelly did here you know he he tried moving in boxing, but he was out of gas by the sixth round where he got dropped twice, and it was just very odd to me. That being said, you know, I do want to give Josh Kelly credit. You know, 26 years old, went in there against a priming, an obviously priming European champion, and David Avenesian, 32 years old. Kelly could come back from this, man, and he did step up, like Eddie Hearn said, to take on this challenge, and I respect him for that. But again, I'm curious as to why his conditioning wasn't better because that's why he lost his fight he got walked down and you know again if you're going to back up and try to be flashy and and throw counter shots and and, and catch the guy on the way in you got to be able to do that for 12 rounds you can't be gassed out by the fifth or sixth round that's what happened here he just he was done and again no i mean he didn't really try holding when avanesian came in either so i mean you got to do one or the other with a pressure fighter like that of course you know i i sound like a uh armchair boxing coach now but that's what i seen and and you know that's my takeaway from that fight florian marku versus rylan charlton the co-main event was also a fantastic fight look this is one i was looking forward to because florian marku was talking a whole lot of trash not only leading up to the fight but during the fight you could tell he's a very capable fighter but i was excited to see rylan charlton because he does look like a very strong, young, up-and-coming guy. We saw what he did against Joe Laws in his last fight, also dealing with a mouthy guy. And uh, this was a hell of a fight tonight. Look, Marku, despite having the better arsenal, despite being a bit sharper, was pushed in this fight. And he was talking trash throughout the beginning of the fight, you know, first five or six rounds, I guess you can say. But... Charlton just wasn't letting up. He just continued to pressure him, pressure him, pressure him. And I believe at one point, perhaps it was in the sixth round, bam, he gets hit. Marco gets hit with a left hook. I mean, all that trash talking went right out the window. He got caught with a left hook, went down. I said to myself, oh my goodness, the tables have turned. Listen, it was a pretty good fight up until then, but Mark, who was ahead, but when that left hook landed in the sixth, I said to myself, the tables have turned. This could be Rylan Charlton's chance to win this fight. Uh, luckily for Marco, he was able to gather himself, you know, stop the messing around, stayed sharp, which is what he needs to do, and not worry about the, the you know, running his mouth so damn much. And he was able to finally land some solid stinging shots in the eighth round. The, uh, the team for Charlton, despite the fact that he was fighting back through the towel in, a lot of people were okay with the stoppage. I guess I'm okay with the stoppage, but I just felt like, you know, I would have probably let Charlton go on a bit more because he was behind, even if it was not by that much, 
up until the sixth round when he landed that big left hook. And, you know, he does have that big power. And you got to give a guy like that a bit of a chance. I mean, he wasn't even down. He was still throwing back. And the towel came in. So, I mean, I'm not hotly contesting or debating it, but I would have probably given him, you know, maybe maybe the rest of the round or something. I don't know. That's the way I think about it again because he does have big power and he was able to drop Marku and really was, you know, made it a competitive fight. So, you know, what I want to say about the fight is I'm excited about Marku. I think he's got a lot of talent. I think he's slick. I think he's sharp. I think he's good. But I'm also excited about Charlton, man. I, I, I think... With a little bit more seasoning, you know, he can be a good fighter. And this was an entertaining fight, and that's what we pay to watch. And I, I respect both guys. I would love to see them back in there, you know. To hell with the boxing culture that tosses people out when they take the loss. I don't believe in that bullshit. I want to see these guys back in there. We had a couple other good scraps on the card. Uh, we had Gabriel Valenzuela uh, getting the majority decision against Robbie Davies and what was, you know, uh, Diamante, the uh, the announcer said this was going to be a sleeper and he was right, man. This was a bloodbath. You definitely want to go back and watch it. Valenzuela got the decision. The Mexican fighter coming into the, you know, to the UK getting the decision was a big deal. He did deserve it. So that's good. We know there have been some scoring controversies recently. People are starting to question uh, the, the judges over there. But uh, you know they they did the right they did the right thing here. But this was a back and forth, blood and guts fight. There was blood everywhere, uh, knockdowns. I mean, it had everything. So a fantastic fight. And uh, you know we also had uh, what's his name? We also had Johnny Fisher. You know, big heavyweight got a nasty first round knockout um, against Matt Gordon. And you had Jordan Gill. Fight another very tough Mexican at Cesar Juarez and pick up a unanimous decision. All very entertaining fights, man. Shout out to Matchroom Boxing. So that's my thoughts on this. You know, I love the attitude of Matchroom Boxing. You know, I love what Eddie Hearn does. He's the only promoter in boxing. He's the only promoter in boxing in the mainstream at the top level that puts guys in there with guys that could beat him, even if they're his own guys. You know, he, he understands that the British public, they respect you, man. Even when you lose, as long as you go in there and you put on a fight, they're going to respect you. And that's something I believe in myself as a promoter. So uh, I love that. I love that culture. And I hope that continues. And that's why I think Eddie Hearn is the best boxing promoter on the planet right now. Knuckleheads, tell me what you thought about the main event in the comments below. Hit the like button. And then smash subscribe, uppercut subscribe followed by the bell notification icon so you know when we put out videos. Also, join the channel, man. Help me grow this channel and the only kickboxing promotion that matters. Just $5 a month at 16 cents a day. You can help me grow. Uh, you'll get access to our live pay-per-views, discounts on Fighters Rep merchandise in the link below, which also helps me grow the channel. And you'll get access to our members-only meeting at the first of every month. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Be sure to join me tonight. Forget it right Saturday night after the Valdez versus Bear Chelt fight.